Hi, my name is Cassandra Ratzliff. This is my week four reflection for Introduction to Instructional Technology. This week we talked about just choosing online resources and how to choose those effectively. Um, some suggestions were just making sure, you know, asking yourself, is this a reliable resource for me? Um, does it have a variety in its resources and are they easy to use and user friendly? And then, you know, you need to know, is this meeting my needs? And um, as these things can get costly, you know, it's nice to know, like, is this going to cost me down the road? And, you know, what that is going to look like if it's completely free or maybe it's a free demo for six months or something. Um, we looked at Scholastic 25 which I thought was really neat. I'd heard of Scholastic as far as the books and I knew that they had some online resources for teachers as well. Um, I had used those, I'd used Scholastic when I was homeschooling my kids um, a little bit. And, but I had never seen this website of like Scholastic's top 25 for teachers. Uh, some of my favorite ones were the Daily Starters was probably my favorite. I always loved as a kid in school, I loved it when you'd come in and there'd be a problem on the board for you to solve while you know, teacher's taking role or your classmates are just coming in late. And I love that idea of just having something ready for the kids to work on. They have a notebook that they put these in. Uh, so that was probably my favorite and I definitely want to keep that in mind uh, for the future uh, when I have a classroom of my own, hopefully. Uh, Smart Exchange for creating lessons for your smart board was another Scholastic 25 favorite. Uh, it was talking about when you are trying to create lessons on your smart board, maybe you wanna go and check this website first. They may already have some, so you don't have to completely start from scratch. Uh, I thought that would be useful. Uh, Teacher Tube was one on there. I thought that was cool too, because instead of filtering through YouTube, wondering, you know, is this gonna be effective? Or wondering, can I use, you know, is this going to have anything inappropriate later on in it? And I think TeacherTube could be useful just in having some of that already filtered out for you because um, it's already been teacher approved. And then Teaching Tolerance was another website on Scholastic 25 that just helps with teaching a little bit more like trickier issues such like civil rights issues and separation of church and state and stuff like that. I thought that could be useful too to have those lessons already done for you because some of that can be kind of tricky to explain. Um, Quizlet was one that was on there that I thought would be a neat resource, not just for teachers, possibly students like me in college, uh, to go on there and practice. Um, I think that that's a good resource for students to go on and practice their quizzes or flashcards, and it's free. Uh, for teachers.org, I... I think this is a helpful website. Um, I actually preferred the Scholastic 25 over te uh, for teachers.org, but I didn't think, I don't think that for teachers.org is not a useful website. I think it, you know, is a nice resource out there just to help uh, get technology more in your classroom and find resources. So uh, good, but not my favorite. Uh, Kathy Schrock's Guide to Everything. I think this is a really neat. Um, resource and this woman who is using her knowledge and education and technology to share with others and as a business I think that's awesome. I thought probably the most uh, useful one that stood out to me on Kathy Schrock's is her other, it's a website linked to it that she runs, is iPads for Teaching and I just know how much iPads are used in the classroom.